Hello everyone, this is Radio Sergeant. I wanted to do a follow-up video of this uh, uh, TID radio, the uh, GM5R. I got this 10-way GM5R or UV5R Pro to give a comparison to the display. And as you can see, um, the display on the 10-way is a little bit brighter or lighter color than it is on the TID radio. Um, so let me turn these on and we'll see the difference. Frequency mode. Channel mode. When the lights go out, we can see the difference. Thing I've noticed about this this uh, GM5R radio is that the the display part of it, or the LCD part, isn't very bright. I know there's a lot of light here, but you can see that, that on this 10-way one, that you can still see the display. So that's one thing I've noticed about it, is that you really got to get it into the light to actually see what it is. You know, unless you turn on... Uh, the backlight, then when you do the backlight, then it, it, you know, it's pretty bright. But other than that, um, I think this is a nice radio. Uh, it's really sensitive. And the cool thing is that it does all of the uh, accessories that you can get for the UV5R. Like, you know, the, the car adapter you can get for here. And, um... Also, the, you can get an eliminator, so you can eliminate the battery and have it in the car. Plus, all the uh, hand mic and ear stuff, it all works for it. So, that's one cool thing. And then, like I said before in the previous video, that it came with the 3800 milliamp battery. And that battery actually lasts a long time. I've had this running, running for several days on scan, and it... It held up pretty good, and I found that this thing's also a little more sensitive, too, uh, with this antenna. I've had another radio with similar antenna, and I've put other antennas on it, and uh, it just didn't seem to pick up as good, but uh, I'll have a video on those later. Anyway, I wanted to just do a follow-up on this, and also wanted to show the uh, the software for this radio. So... Um, Hopefully you can see this okay. But anyway, there's a little icon. And it says um, PG, PRG, P51UV is what this, when you download it from, from TID Radio is what it says. So I'm going to open this up. Bring this up here. And this shows that all this, I haven't done anything with this software. All I've done is download it. And this is the way that it comes um, from TID Radio. So all of the CTCS stuff are all off. And it's all set for high power and low power. And then wide. Uh, and then narrow when it needs to be like on uh, on 8 through 14. They're on the narrow and also on the low. So that comes default on the radio itself. And then uh, the scanning part for uh, if you want to scan the GRMS frequencies is all off or on, I mean. So then you come down here for the NOAA stations, which starts at 117. Sorry about that. It goes to 117 and 127. Um, and if you look at the scan part, this one right here is the scan part row. These are all off. So when you go to scan, you don't pick these up. So that's cool. And then, uh, of course they got it set for narrow, but that doesn't matter anyways. And then of course, you know, all the CTC stuff are all off. But anyway, this, uh, this software from, uh, and then all you got is on your settings, you got is, you know, the port and then the language. And then, of course, you got to go in and uh, tell it what, what port you want. On the help 
really isn't much help. <laughs> um, so the program, you read from the radio, or write to the radio, and then under edit, you got channel information, optional features, which is uh, I don't know, all the settings that you can do from inside the menu. Uh, trying to get this all in here. Get all that. And then if you want to... Uh, write in or plug in a frequency um you just come in over here under 31 you got so you got from 31 to 116 to actually put in more channels um but i think that that's great that that uh all ect cs stuff are all off and it's set for high power and low power where it needs and then all set for wide and narrow. And then the scanning part is on. So if you want to scan, um, you can already scan. But then, the, like I said, the NOAA stuff on the scanning part is all off already. So you don't pick those up. Which are good. Which is really good. But uh, anyway, this program is a real pain in the butt to get. So if you go to uh, your browser. And then you plug in. Go to... Uh, TID radio and this is the website it's actually uh walkie talkie software.com is what brings that up because if you type in TID radio in the browser then that's where it'll take you but anyway so you come in here and then you got your home software and all this other garbage that most you know places do and then you got this button here so you click on download and then it comes up here for the um, for the uh, cable. So depending on what cable you have. But if you scroll down, you get the software for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, and then it's got all the models here. And then if you scroll down, there's drivers for Windows 8, 7, and 10. But then you come down here towards the bottom and you scroll down. You actually have all of the different radios that they sell. So you come up and you find the one you want. So they got the GM5, GM5R. So you click on that. And that brings us here. So by radio, Tux doesn't really talk much about it. Uh, and then you want to go to program or download. And then it wants you to log in. So unless you log in or create an account, you can't get this software. Which I think is really dumb, because, I mean, what's the point in that? Uh, are they afraid of piracy or something? Anyway, so you you create an account, you go in, and you actually have to give them a legit email address. Because they send you a code, and once you get the code, then you can log in and, and then go and get your download. So then when it downloads, it downloads it as a R rar file so we'll come in here into the downloads directory so it downloads as an r rar file so you have to download the rar win rare in order to extract this file but you know that's okay it's a free free program so you download that you know, and then you extract it into a into a folder that you want and then it runs the setup, and then you run setup. And then uh, it creates an icon and puts the icon on the desktop. But I think it's interesting that it puts it as a P1, P51UV, because I guess that's what the manufacturer is of that they set up for the FCC. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. But anyway, once you've done that, you know, you can go in and use your cable. And you use the standard cable, then you can, you know, and then you save the changes, uh, whatever, and there you go. And so, um, I actually like this radio. I have several of them, but this is the one I use the most. But 
I also plugged in some of the local ham repeaters so I can listen to what's going on there. Um, and the cool thing about this is that I don't have to worry about transmitting on that frequency if, you know, if I happen to accidentally um, get on that frequency. Here's a little demo and it makes a little noise. Get it turned up here. So it makes a little noise so you can't transmit on um, sorry about that I'm trying to get this in the in the picture here so now I'm on a GRMS frequency so now it'll transmit but if I put it on the other one it won't transmit so that's a good thing. I, I like that. So that way I don't know ac accidentally transmit on their frequency and get in trouble for transmitting on a on a ham frequency. So the uh, FCC gods won't come and get me. Anyways, um, I know this video is pretty raw and Maybe a little jumpy, but I'm working on getting better at stuff. And uh, there'll be more videos to come. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.